What's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new tactics video and today we're going to be combining two of the best Premier League managers this season, the Zerbi and Arteta, Fusion, Confusion, and it is going to be built into one tactic for you guys. If you do enjoy these type of videos, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, but let's get into this tactic and waste no more time. So the first test we're going to do is going to be Brighton side, the Zerbi side. That is going to be what oh, you can see on the screen right now. And as you can see, we had an absolutely incredible season, winning the Premier League and also winning the Carabao Cup against Chelsea. Now, I do want to say this win with the Premier League is a very unique looking one. And I am going to show you why, but before we do, we are going to go over what happened. So as you can see, Premier League champion champions, Carabao Cup champions. We scored 96 goals, 31 conceded and zero red cards. So to be honest, the actual stats are title winning stats. They are deserving of winning the title. But the way we won it was very weird because it was a really off season for a lot of these teams, as you are going to see right now. So for example, the league table here. So we're going to be looking at us coming in with 27 wins, nine draws and two losses. Liverpool, 26 wins, six draws, six losses. Man City, 22 wins, seven draws and nine losses. If we look at some of these draws, they're all so... It literally has... Five one ones, five one ones this season. So I'm going to be upfront with you. It's not the, the usual season that you do see, but to be honest, I'm not going to complain because the stats we had were deserving of the Premier League title, and it is what it is at the end of the day. We are Premier League champions, so what can we say? Going over to the home again, we are going to look at the team stats. And as you can see, we feature in three of them. That is going to be most points per game, 2.37. Most goals at 96, and fewest conceded coming in at 31. Going over to the data hub, we are going to be looking at 2.53 goals per game, conceded at 0.82, and a pass completion of 86.56%. So, some really good stat lines there, also averaging slightly over 19 shots per game. Now, one thing I'm going to say quickly in this video, we didn't actually test with a real big powerhouse, like a PSG, like a Bayern Munich, etc, etc, because I try and keep the videos themed, so Brighton and Arsenal. Now, no disrespect to anyone that supports them, they're not powerhouses. Even Arsenal is not classed as a powerhouse. So if you are using this with a PSG or a team that is like a PSG, I do believe you could really alter these stats quite heavily and go easily above and beyond what you're seeing. But going over to the actual squad screen, and it is going to be who you probably expect of getting a lot of the goals. That is going to be Evan Ferguson, the absolute star boy of this Brighton team with 42. We've got 19 here as well. 14, 10, 10, 8, 7, 7. This guy is an incredible talent, by the way, here. And do you know what? What I really like about this system, again, is everyone's getting involved. Lots of different goal scorers. And the same story comes in for the assisters as well, as we have 25 here coming in from McAllister, obviously now a Liverpool player. So this was recorded before that happened. 14 coming in for Casiedo. Matoma coming in as well with 14. 13 coming in there for Solly March. Gilmore with 8. 8 for Lamptey. So again, a very familiar pattern here. Not only are we seeing several goal scorers getting involved, we're also seeing lots and lots of people getting involved with creating these chances, which is no more than perfection. It's really what you want to be seeing. And I've got to show you this game. It's going to be a 7-0 win over Manchester United in the Carabao Cup against a full-strength United side, as we are going to go 1-0 up inside of two minutes here by really just using the width for the field to the best that we can, playing it into Ferguson, shock and defending, shock and keeping, no command in the box whatsoever. And it really was a lively start as Luke Shaw plays it to Martinez, who loses it out there for Ferguson. Great bit of pressing going in. That pressing forward really getting used well there. And Solly March beats De Gea at his near post. It's what you expect from De Gea nowadays, to be honest. And it is going to be a very lively start inside of 10 minutes. The new man from Liverpool tucks one into the top right corner as well. McAllister, you're never really going to doubt him from that position on the field as he links up with Veltman here on the right hand side who finds Solly March he plays a great ball over the top the splitting pretty much over the top of the sleeping United defence and it's going to be Casillido coming in who tucks it into the right hand corner so a very positive start to this game and it goes from strength to strength as wan loses it here into Matoma who plays the ball over the top of that sleepy defence into Ferguson who tucks it into the left hand corner and at this point United team may as well have gone home. It was nothing short of an absolute obliteration, absolute dominance. And obviously we were away as well. So that's not, that does say a lot how good we actually played here. As Ferguson tucks away that one as well, De Gea may as well be a, a literal, just nothing. He may as well not be in net at this point, as this is now going to be his seventh goal conceded of the game. Webster building up from the back into Lamptey, loads of options he can use. He goes more direct into Ferguson, who tucks it past De Gea. And what a humiliation. And we then go over to... 
Arsenal, which is obviously going to be Arteta's side. Nearly got confused there somehow. But we did manage to win the Premier League with these as well and also win the Europa League against Inter Milan. So a very, very good season here. Obviously, pretty much the season Arsenal would have wanted. They were so close to winning that Premier League title, but you could almost sense City making them bottle it, and they did, which is not good to see for Arsenal fans, obviously. So hopefully this makes up a bit for it. Obviously also winning the Europa League, so a really good season here. 106 goals scored, only 26 conceded, and picking up zero red cards. In terms of the league table, quite dominant here, to be fair, over Man City, with 97 points, them coming in with 86. In terms of the team stats, we are going to be looking at a very friendly 2.55 goals per game. Most goals at 106. Most shots at 854. Most possession at 58, which is really good considering without possession Man City. Teams like that with their caliber of players, really, really impressive. Fewest conceded at 26 and the most clean sheets coming in at 20. So a really, really good season there. Going over to what is going to be the data hub, we are going to be looking at 2.79 goals per game, conceded at 0.68, over 22 shots a game, and a pass completion of 87.36%. And going over to the squad stream, we are going to see a, a bit more of a contribution from everyone in terms of goals scored, as it is going to be Gabby Jesus coming in with 38, Martinelli with 25, Bakayo with 22, 16 coming in for Nketia, Odegaard with 15, 12 for Vieira, 11 for Jorginho, Salabia with 8, Party with 7, 4 coming in for Trossard, and the assists look very friendly as well. 25 for Odegaard, 25 for Bakayo Saka, Zinchenko with 13, 12 for Party, Jorginho coming in with 10, 10 for Martinelli, Vieira with 9. It's the same old story of literally getting everyone involved. And when I make a tactic like this, it literally puts a smile on my face because that's the best way. There's nothing worse than relying on one player purely. Obviously, in this scenario, you could argue that Jesus, you know, he isn't far. He scored quite a fair few more than the rest, but we've got two players scoring, you know, over 20. We've then got one, two, three, four scoring over 10. And, you know, then we've also got a bunch scoring, you know, five plus goals. So it's not just a one man team, which is, you know, a really good sign of how this system actually works. And we are going to watch one of the Premier League games, a 5-0 win against Wolves towards the end of the season. As we play it out from the back a little bit there into Ben White, who sees a great run from Bakayo Saka, who takes a touch and plants it in to the right-hand corner. Nothing the keeper could do in that situation, as it is a very positive start here as Saka tucks in another one from the penalty spot. Actually could finish the penalties on this game. No jokes aside, we have to back Saka. He's an England star boy. We need to get behind him. As Gabriel builds it up into Odegaard in midfield, into Jesus, a touch out wide into Zinchenko using that whip very well a ball back inside into Martinelli and that is some great play using the midfield using the left hand side of the field drives it all the way back into the box and obviously Martinelli is never going to miss from there as Saka picks it up into Fabio Vieira a player that I wish to see more of in real life to be honest cuts it across into Gabby Jesus defense has fallen asleep at this point a very easy goal for Jesus picking up probably what is easily going to be his easiest goal of his career and to finish it off a great ball from Saka and a wonderful header and we are not going to break down the tactic for you guys, but if you are enjoying today's video, please do leave a like, subscribe, and also turn on notifications. And if you've got any suggestions, any videos you want to see, whether that be a tactic or a rebuild, please do comment them because I am looking at every single comment and filling the schedule up with packed videos for you guys. So then, let's talk about the Deserbi X Arteta tactic. It's been highly requested for probably months right now, so I do apologize about the delay, and I'm going to quickly thank all of the names floating down the screen right now. These are going to be existing all new Patreon members. Members. You can check out my Patreon in the link below. Over there, you can see several different tiers and you get some really cool bonuses such as early tactic release, early video release, priority in tactic requests and also rebuild requests. One-on-one -on -one help with your tactics, access to exclusive giveaways and I'm constantly finding more perks I can give back to you guys because at the end of the day, your support means the absolute world. And I got several messages over there about prioritizing this one. So that is why it is so advanced forward compared to the other lists that we've got going on. But let's go over and talk about this tactic then. So it's going to be built around a 4-2-3-1. Now I know Arteta does play a 4-3-3. Deserby plays a 4-2-3-1. I sort of favor the 4 2 3 1 in this with a mixture of the roles that they are going to be playing. And in my opinion, it works slightly better than what the 4 3 3 did. So that's pretty much the only reason why we've gone down that route. It is going to be built off the custom style. It's actually based off a clean slate, by the way. Before anyone is wondering, that is going to be the answer to that question. A positive mentality in possession. We've got fairly wide. 
play out of defense, a shorter passing directness, a slightly higher tempo, and that is going to be it for that selection. Now, there are going to be several changes through the attack and, and the defensive variant, so I would recommend downloading this one and then either download them if you're a Patreon member the other two or obviously copy them click for click because they do alter quite a bit between the normal version, the attack and, and the defensive variant. So I would recommend getting all three if you can. In transition, we're going to have counter press and counter distributing to the center backs and also the full backs with taking short goal kicks. And out of possession, we've gone with a standard line, a high press and line of engagement much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So really a solid 4-2-3-1. And to be honest, it might look like the average 4-2-3-1. Majority of the way that it links into being a Deserbi and an Arteta style is actually down to the player roles. So there is a little bit Arteta and Deserbi based in these ones. Obviously, I also have to prioritize working inside the game because at the end of the day, I can sit here and make tactics that replicate a manager down to a T. But if they don't get results, you're not going to like them. So that is why I always try and prioritize the game performance. So if you've got any questions in the comments, can I use this? Can I use that? Please do comment them because I will also answer them and I love to answer them as well. But going over to the player roles, then we're going to have a sweeper keeper on support on the default, a wing back on the right on support on cross from deep, cross aim center and sit narrower. We've got a ball playing defender on the right on defend, a ball playing defender on the left on defend, and a wing back on the left on support on cross from the byline, cross aim center, dribble more, and also stay wider. The two in midfield is going to be a box to box on support, on dribble more, shoot less often, and tackle harder. And next to him, it's going to be a deep line playmaker on dribble less and tackle harder. And going over to the sort of front three, we've got a winger on the right on attack on cross aim center, an advanced playmaker on attack, on hold up ball, a roam from position and move into channels. And on the left, the one that's going to cut in, score the goals and inside forward on attack on shoot more often. And to finish it off, the cherry on the cake, the advanced forward on attack, the advanced forward, the pressing forward, sorry, it's because I did somehow misread this as advanced, a pressing forward on attack. This is obviously a must in Deserby style. It worked really well as we saw in the highlights, obviously with Ferguson putting the pressure on and it really is a great role on this game. So I would recommend recommend giving it a shot now if you want to if you really are against using it you can use an advanced forward as well just a little heads up now going over to the attack and variant i'm going to be honest in terms of the actual player instructions they remain the same because to be honest so really as attacking as we want it because we have made a lot of tweaks in the team instructions so the player roles are actually going to be staying the same because we don't really want to we don't want to overkill it if you know what i mean so the defensive one it changes a fair bit but for the attacking one it does remain the same it's going to be an attacker mentality in possession they've got a fairly wide overlap left overlap right play out of defense a shorter passing directness a higher tempo be more expressive. And the reason why we've done this is because we are obviously after goals. We're chasing goals now. So we've up the tempo to get more aggressive, try and win the ball back a lot quicker. And be more expressive obviously says what it does on the tin. That is to be a lot more expressive, run up players, take players on. And if you are desperate for a goal, this is what you want to be doing. The overlap and fullbacks is a real, real key part of this as well. Because in the default version, they're not too attacking. But if you ask them to overlap, they are really going to cause a lot of issues on the wide areas causing confusion for the opposition defense and really having you at an attack and advantage. Obviously, the more attacking you play, the more vulnerable you're going to be at the back. But that is up to you when you utilize this. I always like to say, use this if you're desperate for a goal. I wouldn't recommend going into a game like this unless you are a couple goals down on aggregate and you need to get a goal ASAP right from the rip. They would be my two circumstances to use this tactic in. In transition, we're going to have counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute to the full backs and the center backs while taking short goal kicks. And out of possession, we've got the higher defensive line, a high press and line of engagement much more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. And that is going to be the attacking variant. A little memory refresher right for you now. That is going to be the default variant. So quite a few changes in terms of the team instructions and even more when it comes to the defensive variant. So here we go. Bang. As you can see, quite a few changes. So we're going to kick things off from striker to keeper. So this sort of position remains exactly the same. The inside forward goes to a supportive role on pass at shorter and shoot more often. On the wing, a supportive role on cross aim center and pass at shorter. The advanced playmaker also drops down to a supportive role on pass at shorter and hold up ball. Then opt for a ball winning midfielder on the left hand side on pass at shorter and mark tighter. Next to him, we've got a deep line playmaker on pass at shorter dribble less and tackle harder that is going to be on support and we drop the wing backs back to a defensive duty who still have the same instructions on so cross aim center and sit narrower and also on the left hand side stay wider and cross aim center now 
The reason why a lot of these players are on past is shorter, it's going to make a lot more sense when we go over the actual team instruction. So let's go and do that now. So it's going to be a positive mentality in possession. You're going to have much shorter passing directness, play out of defense, a slightly higher tempo, time waste and sector frequently, and play for set pieces selectors. In transition, we've got counter press, counter, slow pace down, distribute to the full backs and the center backs while taking short goal kicks. And out of possession, we've got the standard line, the high press and line of engagement, much more often still, because we still want to be quite a pressing team and prevent and short goalkeeper distribution. Now, the reason why these players are all pretty much on pass at shorter is because we've gone down the approach of playing with a higher tempo to win the ball back, win it back quick, win it back fast. But when we've got the ball, we want to maintain it. We've got to try and really dominate possession, hold on to the ball. The, the saying goes, you've got the ball, the other team can't score. It is very true. Very basic, but very true. And that is the path we've gone down with this defensive variant. Win the ball back as quick as you can, hold on to the ball, possession play, tie the team out, and still have enough firepower going forwards to when they eventually get too tired to mark everyone. And you maybe can go a little more, a little bit more direct in that sort of, you know, in that sort of outcome. But the overall sort of point of this is to literally suck the life out of the opponent and simply keep the ball and it works really really well and obviously having the additions of time waste and helps massively burning down any sort of second you can helps obviously at any sort of stage of the game and that is three very very good tactics to use obviously a crossover of the Zerbi and Arteta into 14231. And I really hope you guys like this because it took a long time to make. And it's one of my favorite formations to use. I've been using it on sort of my off stream save, and it is a lot of fun to play with. So I would recommend giving it a whirl. If you have enjoyed today's video, please do leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you again this week for another tactic video, which is going to be, didn't mean to hit the mic, Sir Alex Ferguson's treble winning tactics.